and welcome to South Today. We're in Wickham as the fun fair comes to town. This is a huge event for this village and is also an important one for the travelling community who hold one of the biggest and oldest horse fairs in the country. Plenty of dealing, plenty of dealing, <laughs> plenty of singing and dancing, I should think. In other news, Victor's Joy, the 99-year-old on the road to recovery after becoming one of the oldest people to have beaten cancer. And Great Scott, the world's most famous train, heads to the south, but there are police concerns some of the public may be putting themselves at risk. Well, here we are in Wickham in Hampshire. The square is the centre of the village, surrounded by shops, but nothing has been opened because the fair has come to town. And this is the traditional fair fair, but at the end of the square is the horse fair, an important day in the calendar for the travelling community as they buy and sell the horses. But not everyone is pleased that the fair is here today. We'll be finding out why later, and we'll also be talking to someone who has organised this event. First, though, let's get the news of the day with Laura Trant. I have so much left to do with my life. The words of Victor Marston, the 99-year-old Hampshire great-grandfather, who's believed to be one of the oldest people in the world to have beaten cancer. He underwent a major operation to remove a tumour in his bowel and has now been given the all-clear by doctors at the Royal Bournemouth Hospital. This kind of treatment costs, on average, about £5,000. Victor's story raises issues of how technology and people's fitness means operations can now be carried out much later in life. And Jana Gadgill has been to meet him. Would I be able to check your blood pressure, Victor? Oh. Victor Marston was born during the First World War. Yeah, so we'll just undo your... He served in the Territorial Army for the second. His fighting spirit made him suitable for surgery for bowel cancer which he didn't realise he had. Get no sign with cancer, in my view. I never, I've had through, this is the third operation for cancer, and I've never had any so, real signs until it really comes. And then, the, then the, the surgeon will say, you've had this some time. I say, well, I didn't know. He's the oldest person in the country known to have been cured of cancer. Well, I didn't know that. I read the papers about neglecting old people and just letting them drift away. But if you want the opportunity to carry on, it's here. Victor joins another venerable veteran, Gladys Hooper from the Isle of Wight, who last year became the oldest person in the country to have a hip replacement at 112. But with people living longer and requiring more from the NHS, should consultants consider a cut-off? Mr Marston, hello. Some people might say, considering uh, we have a 99-year-old patient and the surgery is a very expensive procedure, they might question whether it's worth it. We're getting away from, from age. What we go on is, is firstly, what, what are people's views? Um, and if they are of clear mind, as Victor is, that's the most important thing. And then, secondly, their general medical well-being and quality of life. Don't worry. The doctors say Victor's as fit as some 50-year-olds and raring to go back to Ringwood to see his nonagenarian mates. I'm Jana Gadgill, BBC South Today, Bournemouth. It's impossible to overstate the importance of this operation to Victor. But on the day that health regulator NHS Improvement announced an unprecedented overspend by hospitals, how do surgeons decide on how old is too old for this sort of treatment? Well, actually, since 2012, it's been illegal to make decisions based purely on age, with judgments instead made on fitness. Nearly two-thirds of cancer patients are over 65, and yet a recent study showed an almost a fifth of areas, there was a 25% reduction in some operations after 65. Earlier, I spoke to Scarlett McNally, a Sussex-based consultant surgeon and spokeswoman for the Royal College of Surgeons. I started by asking her to take us through the decision process before putting someone forward for an operation. And often surgery is the best option for a patient. So you work out what problem they've got and you assess their risks and fitness. Um, but often the surgical operation can get someone back to being um, an active 
person afterwards. So if somebody's got a blockage or a lot of pain or they've had a fracture, you can do an operation that will have a good chance of getting them back to a good quality of life. But saying that, we hear that if you're over 65, you've got less of a chance of actually being operated on anyway. Is that because people's health tends to decline then, or is it a bit of age discrimination coming into the mix? Well, it really comes down to the fitness of the person for the operation you're considering. It's not their chronological age, it's their biological age and how fit they are. And really, for each individual patient, whether the risks way up against the benefits. And it's a particularly difficult one now, isn't it, because we've heard about this massive overspend by the NHS, and yet we do need to be operating on more older people. Well, often an operation, just with one event, will get someone back to a very good quality of life, whereas the alternative might be someone having a great deal of pain or needing much greater care, which in itself can cost thousands of pounds, um, in a nursing home, for example, or in a hospital for a number of days or weeks. And an, an operation often can be the cheaper option and clearly, in many cases, is the better option for the quality of life. Scarlett McNall McNally speaking to me a little earlier. Excitement is building this weekend for the arrival of perhaps the world's most famous steam locomotive, the Flying Scotsman, after its 10-year restoration project. It's due to leave London on Saturday morning, running through the Thames Valley to Salisbury and on to Southampton and Eastleigh before heading back to London. But there are concerns tonight about the safety of the huge crowds that are expected. Our reporter Joe Campbell is at Woolhampton in Berkshire tonight. Joe. Well, if you wanted a ticket for one of the carriages being pulled along by Flying Scotsman tomorrow, the answer is forget it. They've been sold for quite some time now. But many people are expected to line areas of the tracks like this just to get a glimpse of this iconic locomotive. And that's caused concerns after some people on some of the other routes it's been on try to get just a little bit too close for safety. It's a name known around the world. And when Flying Scotsman hits the South's metals tomorrow, it can expect a reception befitting of an A-list celebrity. Newbury, Pusey. Reading today saw the usual diet of commuter and high-speed trains. For spotters, all very standard fare. But Flying Scotsman is expected to draw the crowds. What we would say to people is, Flying Scotsman is going to be coming a few times during the summer, so don't worry, don't, don't panic. There will be plenty of opportunities to see it. Hopefully it will become quite a regular sight on our on our tracks but if you are going out to see the flying scotsman at the weekend stay safe stay off the railway stay off the track stay behind any fences and make sure that you are not in any way interrupting what is still an operational railway those wanting to get up close and personal have already caused problems on previous runs well, amidst the soft focus images on this social media campaign a rather more hard-hitting message Trespass on the railway is a criminal offence. It can land you with a fine or a criminal record. When you're spectating this summer, do not trespass on the railway. Stay the public side of fences. Stay well back from the platform edge and follow the directions of staff. Majestically, the beautiful engine eased out of platform. Flying Scotsman may be a piece of history, but the days of people getting this close, well, they're long gone. Well, there have been a few worries, of course, that Flying Scotsman might not make it after all when it ran into some engineering troubles up in York yesterday. But we understand it is now in London and it is ready to make that first visit of this summer season through the Thames Valley and on to Southampton. Joe, thank you. The Duchess of Cambridge has been in Portsmouth today, taking a high-speed ride on a racing yacht with Olympic medalist Sir Ben Ainsley. Kate took the helm on board Sir Ben's racing catamaran for a circuit of the Solent. He's based in the city with his team, hoping to win sailing's America's Cup. Well, that's all from the studio, so let's rejoin Sally on the BBC South bus. Sally and the team are in Wickham in Hampshire for its annual horse fair. Well, BBC South Bus has come to Wickham in Hampshire, and normally this whole square would be a car park, but not today, as the fair is in town. 
Now, let me just tell you something about the history of Wickham, because it is a very important place. And if you go right back to Roman times, it was bang in the middle of Winchester and Chichester for the Romans as they marched through. Mentioned in the Doomsday Book as well, and the fair is here because of a royal charter. But what is really interesting today, as we have moved around and walked around, is the huge police presence here. All the shops are closed down, and there is a kind of sort of three or four mile perimeter, I'm told, where many other pubs and businesses have decided to close as well. A very different feel to Wickham, which is what it's not really used to. Well, Tom Hepworth explains what this is all about, why the fair is here, and how this Hampshire village has changed dramatically for a day. <laughs> Welcome to Wickham. It's a traditional English village nestled in the heart of the Meon Valley. It's still got its own post office, it's got a school, a fire station and plenty of independent shops. Life in the village revolves around the square. Now it's a car park, but in the past it would have been a muddy space full of horses and carts. But Wickham isn't some rural backwater, it's a village with a lot of history. It was a pottery centre from Roman times. And then I think it's fair to say it just became an ordinary agricultural sort of development with a good site by the river. But on the whole, it was just a, an open, grassy area where traditionally animals had been allowed to stray. Most of the rural crafts were fairly well established here because the demand was local. The railway gave the opportunity to expand and do work in other places and bring some of that wealth back into the village. An unremarkable place, you might say. But once a year, everything changes. The day starts when a pony drinks a pint of beer. The square fills with fairground rides and market stalls. Horses are raced and traded, and thousands of people descend on the village. It all started in 1269. Henry III issued a royal charter to the local lord, Roger de Scrooge. The original charter was written in Old English, but in 1952, the Women's Institute in Wickham had it transcribed. So now we know he and his heirs forever may have a fair every year. What would it have been like in those early days of the fair? I would imagine it had been quite, quite different from what we see now. After all, it's 750 years or so. A lot of travelling people would have come into the village and brought information about things villagers had never dreamt of. Quite clearly, exchange of animals would have been significant from the early days, and I suppose this is a specialist aspect of that. In the 1920s, the rights to the fair were transferred to the local council. If we wanted to say goodbye, we don't wish to have the fair or the horse traders here anymore, even if it was granted, I still think on May the 20th they would all be here, but I, we're not going down that road in any case. We love it, we love it. The fair's here to stay. The fair and the horse fair, the horse traders, are here to stay, definitely. Nevertheless, local opinion is divided. Because it is so busy and so packed, actually for safety reasons we'll close, the whole of Wickham does. I, I think it's got uh, out of hand. It's a spectacle, to be sure. It was a place that I took my wife on our first date. I would like to see it continue um, I would also be very honest and say I would also like the security around it and the control of it to improve as well. Well, mixed views there, as uh, you could hear, and we're going to be talking to a few more people who we've spoken to earlier in the day about the Wickham Fair and what it means to them a little later. But now we're going to talk to the, the man who has, uh, is the owner of the fun fair here, and that is John Wall. John, thanks very much for joining us this evening. How long has your family been... Um, bringing this fair to Wickham? Well, I've actually been involved with the fair since 1881. That's a long time. Yeah, not me personally, but the family. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. want to say that. It's a, it's a big family tradition, though, is it? Yes. Oh, this is one of our main events, what we do. This is a, a very character fair to us, yes, yes. How important is this day, then? You say it's, you know, it's a character fair, but how important is the day to you? Well, it's like Christmas for us. It comes around once a year, this fair. This is the, the, what the people got here with the charter of this fair. The locals don't realise what value there is in this village because this village is known all over England. We run the market as well. 
And people come to the market right from Cumbia. It, it, people speak about Wickham all, all over England, and it's only because the charter was granted to this village why it's so popular with everyone. But I've spoken to quite a few people today, and I've just got to put this to you. I mean, for two things, really. First is, the businesses here, why have they all closed down? They Why close down today? Because they've lost revenue for a whole day. That's quite right. They never used to close down. Once this village was a hive of activity, every shop, every pub, and all the locals come out, and the schools all used to have a holiday for Wickham Fair Day. So what's the reason for them closing, do you reckon? I don't know. I, I don't know. There's a lot of new people come into the village, and perhaps they, they don't do really understand. I mean, I know you travel around a lot, and this is your job. This is what you do. This is your way of life. Do you feel welcome when you come to places like this, when people turn and say, well, we don't want you here? Well, it's funny you should say that, because the, the proper Wickham people, the older people of Wickham, we didn't know their names, but we all knew their faces and they knew us. And I think things was a little bit friendlier. I think the people that buy into Wickham and come into Wickham, they don't know the history of Wickham. They've bought a nice house in the town here, the village, and, and they don't understand that this is the art of Wickham. It, it, it's interesting what you say, because what I have noticed tonight is that there is, I mean, there's been a huge police presence here today, incredible, but also, it's very quiet here this evening. It, it's quieter this evening it, than what it usually is. Is it quieter here this evening? It, it is a bit quieter. Isn't and it? finally, if I could just ask you, how do you get on with the travelling community and the horse trading that goes on? Because I know you're totally separate, but how do you get on with them? There's no problem at all. They do their business, we do ours. We both know we've got businesses to run. But it's no different than a doctor and an electrician and a surgery. The electrician got to do his business, the doctor got to do his. But they don't meet one another, do they? John Wall, great to meet you, and thanks very much for coming on the show. Thank you. Good to meet you. Well, John just referred to that, of course. We've got the horse fair, which was uh, right down the other end of the square here. It's a really crucial day in the travelling community calendar. This is where a lot of the horse trading goes on. And this is one of the biggest and one of the oldest in the country. Tony Husband has been here all day, and this morning he caught up with some of the travelling community to watch what went on. They poured into Wickham this morning, upholding history and just catching up with old friends. This is a gathering which means so much to those who visit. Oh, brilliant. I've been coming here since I was a boy. Good, isn't it? Hey, Spending plenty of money, that's what it is. Hey. <laughs> yeah. How many years have you been coming here? Well, ever since I've been a kid, and I'm 78 this year. You're not. I am. <laughs> we're, we're looking forward to, like, looking around and seeing if we can get something. Oh. <laughs> and the horses. I'm going to buy something for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a meeting for everyone, really. Everything goes on. Drinking, a lot of drinking, gambling. That's yours, he's mainly. It's only one day a year, so, so yeah, enjoy the moment. When the horses start trotting up and down, yeah, it, it's a sight to behold. Tradition is the buzzword here. At 10 o'clock every year, a pony takes a mouthful of ale, a ceremony which launches the day. How long has that been a tradition? Over 800 years, 13th century. They all started. And Wookham Fair wouldn't be going today if it weren't for my granddad. My granddad was the only one who turned up to this fair one year with a pony in a track. Get up there. What's it mean to everyone? Well, a lot. A lot. It's a, it's a date in the, in the gypsies' calendar. Good one, fair. Yeah, it's a good day. Just have a lot of pleasure out of it. That's what we got our horses for, is our pleasure. And who we got here? That's Jesse, my grandson. Wow, Jesse. Good to meet you, Jesse. He's going to be the next man of Wickham and Fair when he's older. Well, one of the main attractions of the fair is to see the horses. Up and down they go all morning, and, of course, during the course of the day, they'll be traded maybe several times. And it's one of the big traditions here at the Wickham Horse Fair. <laughs> it's not a universally popular practice, but it is monitored on the ground. There are some issues with some that are less healthy, if you like. We have identified quite a few that have problems with their feet, with their hooves. And also, we very much want to engage with these people. Part of our role is education. So by having a vet here, we can give advice if we see something that's not right with an animal. There's also a large police presence here. They're visible to ward off any violence, which has flared on occasions in the past. But for generations of families, this is an annual ritual, which even after 750 years, maintains a special place in the travelling community's calendar. 
And as always, when we're on the BBC South bus, people come to see us, have their photographs taken, and the same has been today. A lot of people coming up, having the photographs taken, some unusual ones as well, I have to say, not the ones you'd normally expect. If you want to see a lot more of those photos, and indeed post a comment yourself, then just go to our Facebook site. Just going to read um, a couple of comments that we've got coming in. Freddie saying, I'm selling a few horses today, but it's not been a great day for trading. This year's not as good as usual. Interesting. Vic says also, says, I meet a lot of old friends here from all over the country. Lovely day out with the kids. There's room for everybody to enjoy themselves. So he's very much for it. Bill says, I've uh, come a few times before. I came here as a youngster to see the horses and the people. I don't buy horses, but it's good to see them shown in the square. And Anne and Chris say, we've just recently moved to Wickham and we love it. OK, here's a flavour, all right, just a flavour of what people have been saying today about the Wickham Fair. People, when they move here, then they, they learn the history of the place, and I think they like it. We do, anyway. I think it draws people in, but obviously the local businesses are not open to take advantage of that, but they obviously weigh up their risks. I thought, what a lot of beautiful characters there were. Um, I've never seen so many police, I don't know why that is. Never anything else is shut. <laughs> it makes for a pleasant viewing. You can, and it's they're, a lovely they're, day out. They're, they're lovely animals, they really are. <laughs> Brought me to see Wickham, so actually that's got to be a positive. Yeah, I think people will come back. I love it. I think it's unique. It's uh, well, where else are you going to find anything similar? And we know that tomorrow morning, if you walk down the street at eight o'clock, it's gone. But it's a nuisance. It doesn't do anything for the residents. I don't yeah. think we. We just come down and have a nosy. We don't spend any money. And... It doesn't bother me. It's a tradition. Um... I know some people want to get rid of it, but they'd have to go take it from the Queen since the Royal Charter. We've lost too many of our traditions. Lots of comments and very different ones today. Um, now, he, uh, he's bought himself a horse today, I understand. He's bought himself so much candy floss that we've nicknamed, it, nicknamed him Mr. Candy Floss Man. And he's down here. Tony Husband is about to do the sport. Uh, you're going to win me something. Hey, maybe you've got to come down and join me. Come on. <laughs> hey, I'm the candy man. Now then, let's have a go. This is uh, one, of the, uh, one of the stalls you can have a go on here tonight. So what are we, I'm going to aim for the football. No surprise there. Look at that! Do you know what? I practised a few minutes ago. I didn't get any. Anyway, while I have a few more goes at this, uh, let's tell you about today's sports news. Uh, we'll start with sailing. And the manager of the Team GB sailing team has admitted he's concerned about the quality of the water that his team will be sailing in in Rio this summer. Uh, the Olympics will see the regatta taking place in Guanabara Bay. The water's been a constant source of concern in recent years. And although steps have been taken to clear up the worst of the sewage, it won't be perfect, according to Stephen Park. I think we'll always be concerned about the water quality, to be honest. Um, Rio's not alone in that, that situation. They, you know, they, they have started to make some improvements in some areas, and certainly the water quality in the marina itself will be better because they've managed to stop the raw sewage <laughs> being pumped in there. But um, you know, we've got a lot of health protocols in place to try and really look after the, the health of our athletes and to try and make sure that they're actually fit to go sailing. Hey, I'm really getting the hang of this now. That's another one. We're over again. Excellent. Now, last night we were down in the New Forest for some cricket down at Bashley. It was Hampshire against Dorset. T20 blast preview. Uh, very much a dress rehearsal for Hampshire ahead of the competition starting next week. Hampshire won the game by 57 runs. They bowled out the part-timers of Dorset for 117 after posting a target of 185. Of course, Darren Sammy and Shahida Freed will be joining Hampshire next week ahead of that competition. Some football news today for you. Convenient as we've gone for the football. Let's see if we can get it again not so good that time Adam Smith Bournemouth defender signed a new four-year contract and Gordon Greer and Inigo Calderon among players released by Brighton today after their failure to gain promotion but there are new deals for Bruno and Kasper Ankergren and it's congratulations to the man we're going to see in the pitches right now Winchester City striker Warren Bentley he was awarded with the non-league golden boot for being the most prolific striker in non-league football the former Southampton youngster scored 57 goals in all competitions this season now, performance of the week is something that always heralds people who do well in grassroots sporting performance. Perhaps I could be a contender this week, but if you want to be a contender, this is how to do it. Make sure you get in touch with us 
via social media or via email. We'll give you a shout out on Monday night in our sports roundup on the Red Sofa on South Today. Sally, it's gone quite well for me down here. I've won a plethora of prizes for you. I'll bring you up a football. Yeah, Over to you. I really look forward to the football. There's nothing else that I wanted. <laughs> I've got a few up here. Alexis and I are He's making our fire. way down there. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Did they go right over? I we can have a go later. Two for you, good. one for me. Yeah. OK, we're on. Yeah. Right, overcast. I've got to be, I'll be honest, I'm freezing cold. Yes, the, the wind has picked up and it is going to stay with us over the next 24 hours and it's going to be quite unsettled with some really quite heavy rain. So, through after dusk tonight, we are expecting the heavy rain. Let's take a look at what we can expect overnight tonight because there will be that really band, heavy band of rain moving its way eastwards across the region. There could be some torrential downpours, even the odd rumble of thunder at times through the course of the night. And temperatures tonight will fall away to around 12 Celsius. So it will be quite a mild night, but with the breeze, it will feel quite chilly as well. A lot of cloud to start the day tomorrow. Maybe some outbreaks of rain. That rain staying with us through the course of the night until the morning, but becoming more fragmented. And through the course of tomorrow afternoon, there will be a little respite. The next band of rain is on the way, and temperatures will reach a high of 14 to 15 Celsius, maybe in prolonged periods of sunshine up to 17 Celsius. Now, through the course of tomorrow night, the showers will finally ease, but there is still the risk of the odd rumble of thunder and a lot of cloud to start the day on Sunday. Temperatures tomorrow night down to around 9 to 10 Celsius, so they are slowly falling as we head through the week. Now, for the rest of the week for Sunday, well, Sunday we are expecting some really quite heavy showers after a dry start to the day. The showers will start rolling in from the west, mainly affecting southwestern parts, so Wiltshire and Dorset bearing the brunt, but they could move further eastwards. And temperatures on Sunday around 14 to 15 Celsius. So the outlook is looking fairly mixed. Tonight we'll see that really heavy rain. Tomorrow a band of rain during the course of the day. Some dry interludes if temperatures um, will rise nicely in any sunny spells, perhaps up to around 17 or even 18 Celsius. But where we hold on to the cloud and also the rain, we are looking at temperatures being around 13 to 14 Celsius. Showers can be expected on Sunday. They could be heavy and they could last for around 40 minutes or up to an hour in some places with the fairly light winds. So that's your forecast for South today. Now with a very local forecast for Wickham for tomorrow, here's the showman. Tomorrow it will be cloudy with rain at some times. With highs of 14 and southwesterly winds. I love those. I love those. They're, They're great, aren't they? They are. Uh, They're for you. Oh, thank to, you very much. When we get off the bus, you can go down and join Tony. Uh, that's it from us for this evening. Have a good weekend, won't you? Next Friday, we're going to be in Swanage, the start of the Purbeck Arts Festival. So make sure that you join us for that. From Wickham, good night. Good night.